Ma'am, you know more children die here than in a Planned Parenthood? Because what they do is they'll make... Can I get more information and get a little more information about what you're talking about? I've seen it all online. They take 10 or 15 eggs. They take 10 or 15 yeah, eggs, right? We do. But thank you. Right. I don't think you're going to change minds by yelling at patients and making them cry. And then they take some and they implant them. The others they freeze or they discard or they experiment on. It's common practice. That's what IVF does, right? No. Oh, so they don't freeze them? They don't discard any of them? Would you like to come in and talk to us? Am I lying? Yes. No, I'm not. Absolutely you are. <laughs> I am not. But I do suggest. I will come in and do an orientation if you'd like. Absolutely. Do you have information? Do I? Do you have, do you have contact information? Yeah. I would love to yeah. have you come and sure. in the education. Sure. What we're doing is so important. We love babies as much as you. We do. Mm. My doctors live and breathe to help people have children. Right. That's all they do. Yeah. And my patients, they, they save all of that tissue to make sure that they can have babies later. We don't discard babies. We don't do any of the things that you're accusing our patients of doing. And our patients, all they want in life is to have kids. Yeah. And that is a blessing that some people get to have and that some people don't. Right. I, under and, and I understand that. that. And I so I, I totally respect what you guys are doing. I love that you're protesting. I think that that is the crux of what makes America great. I uh -huh. do. And I believe in it. And I would be doing it for the... And I love this. I love your passion. I absolutely uh -huh. do. But I'm the administrator here. And uh -huh. I know all the patients and I know all the staff. I hire them. I help them with their protocols. I help them with their research. And the last thing that we want to do is hurt anyone. And especially hurt babies when that is what we all went to school to protect. It really is. Right. It really is. And so if you'd like to come to an orientation where we talk to you about mm -hmm. how the tissue is differentiated and how we help patients understand. I mean, it's a lot. When you talk about tissue, what are you talking about? We're talking about like separate you know we're talking about sperm we're talking about just, eggs just eggs yes. right and not every egg is viable i mean every woman has a period every month and right. not every one of those eggs are viable right we try we do everything that we can to save right. every piece of tissue to make sure that someone can have a baby i would do an orientation let's do it do so, you have a card um no i i can give you my phone number though my that name and phone great. number i'll go get an uh, i'll go get some okay. information, I'll write it down. I'm Jessica. I'm Todd. I'm the administrator here. Okay. Wonderful, right. Todd. I appreciate yeah. you coming out. I appreciate what you're trying to do at the root of at the root yeah. of the situation. I understand that thinking about babies, people, I don't like that either. Yeah. None of us like that. Yeah. So if you'll do me a favor and try not to make my patients cry, I don't mind you being here. Yeah. Well, let's do the orientation, do and it. if you can prove me wrong, I'll repent of that and apologize publicly. I don't think you have anything to repent for. I think you don't know what you don't know, and I think that this is very technical, and well, I wouldn't tell anyone that they need to repent. One of my best friends took an egg from another woman that was frozen that they didn't want to have destroyed and bore that ch child. Actually, yes. two different friends. We right? have a program that does that. Right. We, so people who end right. up fulfilling their family needs and having the extra, extra eggs, yeah. embryos or eggs, right. we embryos, try. Yeah. And those are adopted out right. of our own clinics because right. we know that they're human some people don't have eggs some people yeah. are 25 and they have nothing left and 25 you yeah. have plenty of years left to have kids so yeah but not just that but they're human well it's tissue yes well, I mean, isn't that isn't an egg, an egg that's fertilized a human well i think that when does life begin i think that it, at this stage uh, it, it's not human yet but it com becomes human very quickly um, you know, when we're talking three days uh, within fertilization, that's that's not a baby yet. It doesn't it, have a heartbeat. It can't live on its own. It can't do. Well, a nine-month-old baby can't. A one-year-old baby can't live on its own. You're right. You know. Right. So right. you know. Uh, but a one-year-old has a heartbeat, has eyes, walks around nine months. So is it a human when it has a heartbeat? But before it has a heartbeat, it's not a human. Like um, it might be a donkey or. You know, that's 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 a question that I don't know if anybody has the answer to. Well, I know that what you believe. Scientists believe that it's a human embryo, which not, like it's a human. Let's not, let's not get into what other people believe. Well, I we're talking about our science believe. books that we teach in high school. Life begins at conception. All right. We know that it has its own DNA at conception. Like once it's conceived, the DNA is different than the mother or the father. Okay. All right. It's its own unique DNA. So it's not and it's not going to grow up to be something else like you were once just a fertilized egg that's all you were once yeah, so and nobody should kill you now or five years from now or 10 years ago 
or when you were in your mother's womb or when you were created you know like even jesus was a fertilized egg sure. you know at some point so that's what we're saying is that you probably don't look at it as being a human until it's implanted and growing right and we look at from conception on not when it has a heartbeat i appreciate that you know yeah. so what we're saying why is why are you harassing the patients well because what they will do is take 10 or 15 eggs and fertilize them right yes and some of them they'll choose to implant some of them they'll choose to freeze and some of them they'll choose and some because freezing is expensive you know it costs money yes. and some will just say okay we had our child you know the ones that are frozen just just guard you know or they'll they, they won't freeze them so we believe they're actually children so technically do you know that the ones that don't get frozen are not viable well you're saying they're not viable you don't they, know, you know if they're, why viable. they're not viable why we genetically test them so so like you could tell like if one has like down syndrome yes. or so should down syndrome kids be aborted oh no i don't believe so so it's not but it's not viable no you it say. is that is viable tissue down syndrome, down syndrome is viable you say tissue viable means that it does not have the ability to be a child even if we put it back into the womb uh -huh. it would not it would abort itself so right, so when you so say tissue i don't is, i still don't understand what you mean because like this is tissue sure right? right but an egg is just tissue and so is sperm well so I are mean, you yeah right you're, you're a human tissue it has the potential it's tissue that has the potential to be life absolutely so this is arm tissue this is you know stem cells are different kinds of tissue but it's already parents. life if it's if if it's if the no, no, egg no, has talking, actually let's specifically talk about the ones that get discarded okay so those people keep all of the embryos that could that can be babies because we can tell the ones that are called aneuploidy mm -hmm. that will not be able like their genetics they will not be able to live they will not grow in the womb but are they, they not living right now no they are not they are they are they cannot the cells cannot replicate because they are not a whole piece of DNA. So the, the DNA is so fractured or broken mm -hmm. that they can't be children. All right. So All right. that does get discarded and we don't like that either. So but, if, but that happens with the menses. When women have, even if you have sex and you have an egg there that's ready to fertilize and it gets fertilized, right. but it might not attach because right. of whatever reason, that's just the natural flow. Like yeah. that's just how it goes. Yeah. Now, my wife and I have had that happen where yeah. she was pregnant sure. for a weekend. Right. And, <laughs> and then, then on like then Thursday, she's not, right. and yeah. then she's not pregnant. Yeah. Like that, yeah. that happens. And that's yeah. basically what happens in the lab as opposed to in the body because the body can't do that job anymore. And so that tissue, but any tissue that has the potential of being life is saved and the family gets to decide what they want to do with it, how long they want to keep it. But when you're thinking, like, if we get 20 mm. eggs, uh -huh. that is like amazing. That's amazing, that's an amazing amount of eggs. Even if we try to fertilize all those, they won't fertilize. And the ones that do fertilize, we then genetically test to see, are these, can we make these into children eventually? Can this tissue be saved? And if it can, it is saved. We do everything that we can, I promise. Yeah. to make sure that everybody has because even if we pull 20 eggs sometimes none of them are viable and that's a woman who just had 20 eggs come out of her body that she can't have children with. you know what right. i mean yeah and that, uh, well i don't gonna, i don't think there's anything you know, wrong with discarding a, a an embryo that's, that's viable sure well no that's that's dead that's not duplicating that's not recreating cells that's not dividing sure okay but yeah. if it is in that process then I believe it's actual murder. Even if you think it'll die. Like if you have a three month old or a two month old baby inside of you yeah. and they say, oh, half its brain's gone, you should abort it. You shouldn't abort it. Like you should go ahead and comfort it and let it live as long as it's gonna live and comfort it and love it. Like we don't have dominion over who lives and who dies. Like right. doctors shouldn't say- our, our perception of another's pain makes us do things in the name of trying to be better. But I understand right. what you're saying. From a biblical that's viewpoint- a, That's a decision that maybe we should make. Well, you know, well if, you. if you're a Christian, the Bible says that we're not to make that. Like we don't have dominion over that. Like we have dominion over animals, you know, like we can kill an animal and eat it. You know, stuff like that. We can put an animal out of its misery. But God says, the Bible says, that he's the only one that has dominion over who lives and who dies. In fact, none of the, none of these doctors actually make life. They, what they actually do, though, is instead of a man having sex with a woman and implanting and sending the sperm to the egg and it coming together, they just use a syringe and egg and they do that. So it's just a different way to do it. But it's still, when that comes together, it is God that creates life. 
right? God's still the one doing it. Like, if it wasn't for the sperm, a doctor couldn't go in there and go, I'm going to create life today. He couldn't do it. Yeah, he has absolutely. to take what I God mean, says. You put these two together. Evolution. Right, Ex absolutely. Like, this would not be if we weren't evolving and we weren't continuing to reproduce. Right, yeah, I can right. do. Yeah. Like, we are reproducing. So it's still God who's creating life. It, right. I yeah. Mean, so, how you decide what, who created what, I mean, that's very open to interpretation. I don't... I understand that this is your opinion and this is what you believe and I respect that. Yeah, like he and couldn't I know that go some in of there. Our patients do that as well, but I also allow all of our patients to have a judgment-free zone where when they want to try and have kids even if they're Christian and they didn't believe in this. Yeah, but you're a Christian, a family, right? You know what? You want to know something about me? Uh -huh. I don't know. I was yeah. raised Christian and I have very I have lots of Christian beliefs. Well, but the more that I experience life and the more that I experience people, the more I'm like I don't know very much. I don't. I mean, everything is so what is created and what we are is so vast and unbelievable and wonderful. Yeah, how could it just happen with an explosion? Time? You never know. You I don't know. You don't create don't babies in there with explosions. You take what God has given you, the building blocks, what God has given you. Like he can't go in there without the male and female parts. Right. All right. And create life. Any sure. kind of life whatsoever. Sure. You know? So how do you feel? May I ask, how do you feel about AI? Like how does that rub you? Like artificial intelligence? Like the way that they're planning to probably put human consciousness into inanimate objects? Well, like That's a computer. That I've been thinking about lately, and being like a like, computer Man, is that coming? I read an I read a, uh, a scientific study the other day that you know Google is really pushing hard on creating AI, uh -huh. and it said that they think that we will be able to take our consciousness and put it onto any sort of um, electronics, but mm -hmm. it can be. It can be something that we put nanobots in our body and we become something else. Or they put us onto a different plane and we become something else and our human bodies don't matter. Do you believe that? I don't believe that. But I can see artificial intelligence is coming. And so I just, I, there's so much that we don't know. Some days I'm not comfortable knowing what I know. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like the human body and the consciousness is core to humans. And that you can't just take that out and put it on something else and have it be the same. Yeah, that I don't think you sense. can either because we have right. a spirit. So they're not going to be able to take the sp our spirit and See, put it on to... What does that mean? Is it the spirit? Is it just our brain functions? Like, there's so much that we don't know that most days I'm like, yeah... You know, and then I see the atrocities in the world that it makes me sad for, you know, like... Well, you know, why did God... What does the Bible Syria? say that God created you? I, I'm sorry? Why, why does the Bible say that God created you? Do you know? Like, why were you created? The Bible says... I have a different opinions about that. I believe well, no, I'm saying that what, this what is Bible a say for though? us to learn. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the Bible. Yeah, well, the Bible says that you were created in God's image for His pleasure. For God's pleasure. So He, he created you to please Himself. Alright? So, like, you have extreme value. You're extremely important to God. And what happens to you is of the utmost importance. So much that because of sin, he actually gave a way for you to come back to him. Sure. The repentance through Jesus Christ. Okay. And then being obedient. And what I would encourage you to do is read the Bible because it's true. And your spirit will testify that it's right. But our will, our desire, the sinful man, will actually want to do things that are wrong. Like cheat on our husbands or look at pornography or use drugs or whatever because we'll want to do Isn't things that part like of that the experience we should be having making mistakes and then figuring out what what we believe i well, mean how do you know what you believe if you haven't gone through some things well if if you read the bible if you spend time with yeah, god no, actually talking you. god it teaches us and then when we go and we experience what it's like to stick our hand in the garbage disposal you know or cheat on a, a, a spouse we learn how painful and how hurtful and how much damage that is and how God is right and how if we just follow what God says and do, does what he says, it's less pain for us and it allows us to commune with him and have relationship with him where he'll talk to us and tell us what's right and wrong and help us and protect us, right? And we'll be, able to, we'll be used to help other people do what's right. But if we don't and we just like, well, I want to see what it's like to use LSD and you die, that, you know, that's on you. Now, having experiences like you know whatever it may be you know isn't in and of itself good or evil what's bad is when those experiences oppose the will of god 
because God wants nothing but good for you. Like he actually wants you to be happy and joyful even if you're sitting in prison, all right? Like you can have that joy and you could have it abundantly beyond like reason. Like I don't understand why I'm happy because everything right now is really bad because of these circumstances because of other people's sin in my, around me, all right? But you could have that joy even if you're sitting in jail. And I know and I'm testifying to this to you that it's true, you know? Like I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life. But when you surrender and be obedient to God, and that's why you should read your Bible because it is the word of God and you'll- I was raised Christian, I've read the Bible. Yeah, but being ra raised Christian, like you know most Christians aren't Christians because it's just like a country club. They go to church every Sunday instead oh, of going agree. to a country club. They just they just go to like a little concert and you know and then they go out and then it's like lunch and then you know the mom and dad fight on the way to church and they fight out after church, you know. That's not Christianity. That's America Christianity. But if you read the Bible, I promise you God will reveal himself to you and you'll be able to choose whether or not you want to follow him or not follow him, you know? I've made my choice. I have, and I appreciate that. And I'm, I, I really do. I'm glad that I'm glad that you guys are here speaking up for what you're passionate about. I really do believe that you can get more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. Well, what was your choice when you were talking to God? When you, you oh, choose? that's very personal. That's very personal. Yeah. My relationship with with religion, spirituality is very personal to me. I don't, you know, I appreciate your passion. And while this isn't something that I would do, I try and have other Christ-like characteristics, other ways that I believe that I can influence. Like what? Well, name some Christ-like characteristics. Because he said, if 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 you have Christ-like characteristics, what will happen is, is the world will hate you. The, Jesus said this. And he said, and, and proof of this is, is they hated me first. All right, they actually killed him. They crucified him. I believe in kindness All right, more yeah. than anything. I believe more than, that we more must than be God. kind to each other. No, I'm not going to talk to you about my spirituality. What I'm well, here today is to Well, you just told me about your spirituality. For, yeah, but I'm not going to debate my spirituality with you right now. No. What I'm here to do is make sure that my patients aren't crying and that they don't feel like we're not doing anything to protect them where I am. But I also think that you have the right to be here saying what you say. So. What I want to do is make sure that my my employees and that my patients feel safe. And I want you to have the right to do what you're doing. So as long as we can coexist, I, I want you to be able to do what you feel you need yeah, to do. Well, I'm not stopping so, you guys from doing anything. No, you but know? You're, like, you're, rather, you're upsetting all of our patients. I'm, In fact, I've had all of these people call the police on you and then call me and say, do you want us to go out there? Do you want us to do something? And I've said, no, you know, I know that, I think you may have gotten into a fight on Monday with the Baylor administrator there who came no out. And um, she was rather upset when she called me and she just said, yeah, there was no fight. She, she just wanted us and, not to stop traffic yeah, and we well, didn't stop any traffic. She was, she was pretty hot when she called me and I, I wasn't watching. And so yeah, I just said, no listen, we'll, we'll, we'll go out there and we'll talk to them. But more than anything, just, just be aware of, of the front that you are, are the, the person that you are being to our patients. Like our patients are so off put that yeah. they wouldn't want to have a conversation with you. And I think that that's your point, right? I think that no, you want so, to talk to them. Yeah, we want to talk to them, yes. Right, so I mean, you know. And, and some of them talk but, to us. Right. And, but and most of them just it, want to get in and get out. Well, they don't want to feel harassed. Absolutely. And a lot of people are coming in for quick appointments to check their hormones, see how they're doing, you know, and so it's it's a work day. They have places to be and we try and get mm. them in and out as quick as they can too. Yeah. It's like any, you know, know but what you call tissue, viable tissue or non viable tissue, we call a human. So we believe it's a right. human. That's your right. So I just think that if you're trying to change minds, it might be better to, like I said, more more flies with honey than. With well, we've already just so you know, we've already changed minds. Right. So it's already you know it, it does work and it right. is good. So and right. we're and we're not. I'm not trying to give you personally a hard time at all, and I would love to do your orientation. But I do think there's going to be a disagreement on what I'm sure actual there is. Vial, but if viable had, tissue but if is. You had the most up-to-date research, and you knew that would put you in a better position if you wanted to have a real discussion with patients. Sure. I think that puts you. In I, I would position. do it. Knowledge and, is power, and I would be awesome. And I think it's important. I'll go get a sticky note. I'll come back okay. out. Um, I'll you... get your information. Our uh, we have a marketing person who puts together our IVF orientations for our patients, okay. and I would be happy to have you come as long as you can just sit because this is an information session. Yeah, I so won't do anything coming, in there. Yeah, I and won't. If we invite you into yeah. our facility, this would be something where we just want you to have information yeah. and to understand what they what what we. Yeah, do. no, I would be good. And so um, as long as that's okay, I'm yeah. happy to have you as a guest in the yeah. facility to go that'd, through that. That'd be fine. I would do that. And if you um. I believe that one of our patients said that they were posted being filmed. Um, that's kind of that's a HIPAA violation. 
So if you have any patient, a face with that in the background, uh -huh. knowing where they are, and I know that you've checked in on our page, that's, right. you know, just, we would have to go to our lawyer with that because okay. that's where our patients are being identified and that's against federal, federal rules. So if you'll, I'm happy if you're happy, just make sure we're all abiding by the rules. Yeah, we don't break the law. Great. Okay, we don't, so. Yeah, you know. wonderful. Yeah. All right. A pleasure. Okay, thank you.